Start recording. All right, we are we're hot. So whenever uh, you're ready. All right. Welcome back to Nate the Hate, where today we're going to talk about the Series X from Microsoft and how the company is moving in a new direction. And it's a direction that has a lot of people confused. And all this kind of came forth when Microsoft's Mr. Booty did an interview where he said that the Series X would not have exclusive software for anywhere between 12 to 24 months. And this kind of shot off a lot of red flags to people as they were really began to wonder, does this mean Microsoft isn't going to commit to the Series X right away? And to others like me, it kind of it indicated that Microsoft is breaking away from the shackles of the Xbox being just a stationary home console and that they're really trying to make Xbox a brand in video entertainment. And now this is a topic that I've touched on on the Spawncast for a couple of weeks and really, really got the amount of time it rightly deserved. So for this episode of Nate the Hate, we have brought on everyone's favorite Aussie, modern vintage gamer, because him and I, we have each kind of debated this topic back and forth on the Spawncast, and we're on completely different hemispheres <laughs> as, you know, in terms of agreement of, is this good for Microsoft or is this really a risky, you know, is it a risky maneuver for the company to take moving into the next gen? So we thought it would be good to have this debate of sorts and be able to discuss it with everyone listening. And I do want to clarify, though I'm going to use the term debate, I use that very loosely. There's really no winner in this discussion. MVG and myself are just going, we're going to have a discussion about why we, you know, why we agree with Microsoft on this or why we disagree. The only winners in this are really going to be the listeners because you're going to come out more informed on the topic and hopefully you have a better understanding of why it is a gamble for Microsoft, but why it may also benefit the company. So I welcome you, MVG, to this fun discussion. Well, thanks, Nate, for having me on the uh, your show here. It's an honor to be here, and I'm looking forward to the discussion that we have. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't think this is a, a an argument or a disagreement of sorts. It's really just, like you said, it's just opening up different opinions and different viewpoints to the people out there and hopefully they'll they'll come away with this with uh, a lot more knowledge than than they came into it absolutely so as we've already kind of touched on spawncast a few times when microsoft came out and they said we're not going to have exclusives for that first year maybe two years my stance is that i i understand why microsoft is doing this i see them as branching away from what we have typically seen of a confined console generation. Microsoft is kind of moving towards a a PC type approach where they're no longer going to just be constrained to those, you know, those five year intervals of hardware. They really want to use the current Xbox One and use that as a companion to the Series X when it launches later this year. And in those first two years, they really want to have software shared across the libraries, at least from Microsoft published studios and while I see this as kind of pro-consumer, you're on the kind of on the side of it being this is going to limit Microsoft Studios potentially in terms of creativity and even in like type of software they release because now they're going to be held back by the, I mean, let's be honest, the ancient hardware of the VCR Xbox One. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just let's let's be clear. So the xbox one vcr which we affectionately call that system came out in 2013 so what that's a seven year old old piece of piece of tech that that is still being supported now that's not necessarily something out of the ordinary um the xbox 360 and the ps3 were supported for a long, long time as well and obviously the ps4 is as well but the thought that microsoft more or less is just eliminating the idea of console exclusives you know, and going and supporting five, and I'm including the Lockhart in that mix as well, and the PC at the same time, I think is a massive risk to them. And it really could put them out of the hardware race with Sony. And I'll go even further than that, Nate, and say, I think that the Series X is going to be one of the most, or it will be the most uninspired console launch in the history of console launches. I, I just, there's wow. nothing exciting about this to me. It, it For me, 
the Xbox Series X is like the equivalent of you going to Micro Center and buying a graphics card upgrade for your PC and putting it into your PC. That's what I think the Series X represents. Okay. See, I I agree with that type of analogy because I kind of see that is what Microsoft is doing with the Series X from the Xbox One is that they're basically treating their console business as a PC where they're going to say, we don't care where you play Halo Infinite or any of these other Microsoft published games coming out over the next you know, two years or so. We just want you part of our ecosystem. We want you part of the Xbox brand. And whether you play that game on the Xbox One or you play it on the Series X, we as the company don't care. We ultimately still get that win. But I do see the point of why would I as the consumer invest what we assume probably $500 into a Series X, especially at launch, if Microsoft themselves aren't really committed to it, that exciting new exclusive. Like everyone looked to Halo Infinite when they showed that trailer back at E3 2019, as this was supposed to be the next evolutionary leap for the franchise. And then at E3, we even learned that, well, it's still going to be on the current gen Xbox. So how big of a leap are we really looking at from Halo 5 to Halo Infinite if you are still constrained by those shackles of this ancient technology, whereas you could be freed on this, you know, this vast horizon of new power, new opportunities with ray tracing and everything that the Series X is going to introduce. Yeah. yeah. If I'm right, that seems to be that's more of the side you're on of Microsoft is holding themselves back by basically wanting to keep around an ecosystem on a more or less a failed product line with the Xbox One. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, Halo Infinite is interesting because, you know, again, they have to support five consoles, right? Mm -hmm. Plus the PC. Yep. And that's where things get interesting because, you know, it's, and we, we saw this just recently with CD Projekt Red, how they came out and made a statement about how, you know, and it was a very honest statement. It wasn't like they were throwing shade at Microsoft. It was a very honest statement about why the game uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed. And that is because they are having trouble getting the, the game to run on the Xbox One VCR and the PlayStation mm -hmm. 4, you know, that, that is a lot more information that most, you know, developers or development uh, shops will, will ever disclose. You know, they'll usually say, hey, we just want to, we, we, we need more time to polish the game. And, you know, we're, we're almost there, but not, we're not quite there yet. But coming out and saying right. that was, was pretty important, I think, because it really just kind of illustrates the fact that, you know, via the certification process that these game studios have to go through, Right now, the certification process for Microsoft, somewhere in the certification process will say, your code has to run on all these different systems, you know, at a certain level of performance, otherwise it will not pass certification. So CD Projekt Red could not just easily turn around and say, you know what, screw it, we're not gonna support the, the VCR, we're just gonna, we're gonna support the, the, we'll say the Xbox One X and the, and the Series X, but you know, anything before that is, they can't do that. And, by the same token, they can't do that, obviously, with the PS4. So those types of things really make me wonder, well, why? Why do you, you know, we've got a new system that's, that's we've got two new consoles that are coming out. So why would we hold, hold ourselves back, you know, from, from doing that? Why wouldn't we just move forward? And God knows CD Projekt Red and, and, and probably 343 want to just target, you know, the, the, the the greatest or the, the, the newest hardware that's coming out. And now they have to, you know, you know, go back and, and make sure everything's running on all their systems at a decent level of performance. And I guess the point of all that is, is that there's a cost associated with this, you know, all of a sudden now you have to support this kind of ecosystem of, of different environments because, you know, your message is, our game is going to run everywhere on on all our on all our hardware, but the 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 issue I have with that Nate is is that you know things like the the QA process.
process um, and the, the certification process to pass will potentially could be significantly longer. And there's always a cost associated with that. There's a human cost, you know, does CD Project Red now have to um, hire in a whole bunch of contract employees to, to help out? They probably will. Um, that's kind of common in, in game development, especially when crunch is here. But what what is that extra addition of cost and time that will take, you know, to get Microsoft's games to run on all their hardware versus just saying, you know what, screw it, we're just going to release, you know, new generation games with a new generation of hardware. Right, and that's that's definitely a factor that probably not many people are evaluating. Because, like, when I when I kind of look at the situation from Microsoft of them saying no, none of those exclusives for the first two year. Like my mind goes in a couple of different ways where I'm thinking either A, Microsoft, they said that statement, but it's very non-committal. It's just kind of like, yeah, we're not going to ditch the Xbox One immediately, kind of give some reassurance to the Xbox One X owners. That it's like, yeah, you didn't just waste $500 in the last 24 months. We're still going to commit some software to you. And then I think, is Microsoft saying this because maybe in those first 18 months, they're just not going to have a major software release outside of something like Halo Infinite. And they're just kind of biding their time a little bit. Or is it really just, we want to sell Game Pass subscriptions. We don't care where you use your Game Pass, be it on PC, Series X, or Xbox One. We just want to get you into that Xbox ecosystem and hopefully hold you over long enough that if you do buy an Xbox One VCR, you know, today, maybe in 2022, when we really start committing to those exclusives, you'll be ready to invest in that Series X or maybe even the Lockhart, depending on the price range that you get that in. Because, I mean, even if we remove the Xbox One from the discussion, Lockhart is still coming in potentially maybe two to three times and less performance than the Series X will be targeting, right? Almost closer to like the Xbox One X. So Microsoft really is doing this two skew, ultra setting versus maybe medium setting, PC type of release. No matter how we look at the situation, and like from a business standpoint, I get it. I understand what they're trying to do, where they're just they really are releasing their own series of basically Steam boxes, just with the Xbox brand on it, and they're going to sell that out to Xbox as a gaming service moving forward with xCloud, Game Pass, and so forth. But from a development point, it does sound like it's going to be substantial more work. You're either going to hope that Microsoft lends some assistance or some financial assistance to aid with Q&A, crunch time, mm-hmm. or maybe maybe even a port studio to handle these, I mean, these low end releases of like an Xbox one game, but it's, it's an intriguing business model because if it works, Microsoft basically causes an entire paradigm shift for the industry. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's definitely a calculated risk there for them. And look, I mean, I, I do understand you know, their, their, their approach. And you're right. I mean, if, if at the end of the day, they get their their games in more households, regardless of the hardware that it's running on, then that's probably going to be enough for them to say, you know what, we're, we've done we've done the job that we were supposed to. And, and you know, and, and maybe you're right, maybe things will, will change. You know, maybe Sony will look at, look at that and then, you know, decide, well, what can we do in order to, to make that happen for us? So, I mean, there's definitely some some good points to it. Uh, I'm not completely just, you know, writing it off, but I, I, I do uh, I do have concerns that, that this approach is, is not going to work for them, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, like, outside of, I'll say, the development side, like the Q&A and crunch, where do you think Microsoft could falter with this approach? Well, I mean, for me, I think, and this is just my perception, so a lot of people that are listening to this probably won't agree with this, and that's fine, but I just, I don't think that Microsoft's being aggressive enough with 
with the Series X because let me explain. So, you know, Phil Spencer and, and whoever came out and said, you know, we're not really directly competing with Sony, you know, um, we're, we're doing our own thing. We, we want to get Xbox as a brand. We want to get in as many households as we can and we want to get it. We want to get our name out there, you know, everywhere. We want to be on phones. We want to be on PC. We want to be on our, on our five consoles. It's not really about the hardware. It's about the brand, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, they, they say those things, but then by the same token, We've, we've, we've seen these like dev kit leaks, right? And Sony is firing a shot over the, you know, to Microsoft and Microsoft just this week, you know, and you can tell me I'm wrong, but I believe they leaked that dev kit <laughs> photograph of the Series X. So they're firing shots back at Sony. So there's this kind of, you know, sniper warfare going on between the two companies right now. And the fact that both companies have systems coming out this year and will most likely launch a week apart from each other or you know a couple of weeks apart that kind of tells me that microsoft does care and they are trying to compete with sony so you know you're either you're either going in a hundred percent you're all in on this you know you're, you're going for you're going for the throat or you're not and i think that's the part that frustrates me the most with with what's going on here they 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 seem like they don't want to compete but all the moves that they are making you know, on social media and as far as um, the Series X, you know, the, the reveal at the Game Awards and all that kind of tells me that they are. So if they are, then they should go in, you know, all guns blazing and have a solid launch lineup of exclusives that, you know, some of these um, studios that they've paid good money for and have acquired over the last two years really need to be focusing on. And I think that's that's my biggest, you know, frustration with, with you know, um, the message that they've been coming out with yeah it's it's definitely been a bit muddled like you you use the game award reveal as an example and microsoft came out with ninja theory and they showed hellblade 2 they showed an in-engine trailer of hellblade 2 and i mean it it looks astonishing and then even this past week we see ninja theory come announce or tease the another series x game with project mara and yeah, the trailer didn't show a whole lot of anything. It showed us a hallway with a ghost figment in the mirror or the reflections of the walls to the sides and a footprint just appearing on a rug and then just showed us a staircase. But when you see those type of teases from a studio like Ninja Theory that are it really there to highlight and showcase ray tracing and the advanced technical skill set that the series x is going to introduce and then you hear microsoft's words say well we're still committed to the xbox one yeah it does seem like they're a bit scattered in their overall messaging whereas if they just focused on the series x on these impressive visual games you would say okay microsoft is going for that high end and i I do i wonder if the introduction of the playstation 4 pro and the xbox series x put this mentality into Microsoft's mind of instead of waiting for a mid gen refresh, why don't we just launch with a two skew idea right at the beginning? We're going to have our ultra high end. We're going to have our medium. We're going to have two price points and depending on your economic status or even interest in gaming, you're going to be able to choose these two options. Kind of like we see with phones and tablets today, we have, you know, Apple always introduces or Samsung is always a higher end phone for an extra, you know, a few hundred dollars. And then there's just the intro level. And that's, again, from like a business standpoint, I view that as it's brilliant from Microsoft's point of view. I'm, it's just getting that software on there, getting those people into the ecosystem it makes a lot of sense if it works, if Microsoft is able to deliver a clear message and it's just right now, they're not getting that clear message to the people because they're still just showcasing high end tech demos that are clearly just games that are going to be on the series X. I mean, Hellblade two clearly isn't coming to the Xbox VCR anytime soon. Right. Or even project Mara, that game is clearly at least two years away. Right. 
so and that, yeah, so that, that tells us that it's kind of outside the you know the launch window of hey, we have to support five five consoles, you know. So right. which is fine, and and maybe look, maybe at the end of the day, Microsoft aren't ready. You know, maybe they're not ready for the next generation as far as we don't have any games that um, exclusively will, will run on the hardware because, quite frankly, we haven't had enough time to put these things in developers' hands in order to to you know make exclusive games for it and you know if if that's if that's the case then that's fine i mean i don't have an issue with that i mean if you think about any launch of any system or in recent times for the from the last you know 15 years or so there's always been you know the the um the kind of the cross cross gen games or the cross platform yeah. games xbox one and ps um four you know they had at least 10 games that that kind yeah, of, we, yeah. So, that, like the Call of Duties, yeah, that, that's a lot of third party games. Yeah, Tomb Raider, just, they had tons of stuff. Yeah. You just don't typically see it from a first party developer or the console manufacturer to say, hey, we're going to launch our system with these games from our own studios, but you can play them on that system you already have. Right. And that's, that's really the thing that you had. Like, I, I like the idea. Because it's kind of like, well, I don't have to rush. If I'm a casual gamer, I don't have to rush into new hardware. I can be content with my Xbox VCR, or I could be content with my Xbox One X. But as the like, as thing, I guess what we really have to look at it is, is this move by Microsoft, does it kind of, is it an appealing move to the casual gamer? who only buys a Madden or a Grand Theft Auto every year or the Call of Duties. Because ultimately the enthusiast is going to buy the series launch because they need the biggest, the best right away. The adopter is always going to buy the newfangled machine. Right. So is this kind of a way for Microsoft to say, we can keep that base engaged? Basically the people who kept their Xbox 360 yeah. For probably three years, because Call of Duty kept coming out on it, and then only moved on because that one game they played finally stopped releasing. So is this kind of Microsoft way of saying, we know that Halo base is still going to be there. We're not going to have 10 million Series X at launch. We're only going to have maybe 5 million by the end of the year. But if we can sell 10 million Halo Infinites in the calendar year of 2020, our player base will be larger, thus they'll be happier, and we can keep just that casual, non-committed gamer satisfied a little while longer until we really get our true big gun, be it a Gear 6 or a Halo Infinite 2, prepped right. exclusively for that Series X, and then that's when they're already invested in the ecosystem. That's when we hook them and we reel them in. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I, I think that is probably the approach they're going to take and, and look at the end of the day that that may be all that is required for this to to succeed um you mentioned the vcr and i don't have a vc uh, sorry we both have xbox one vcrs but i don't think you have a one x uh but yeah an xbox one x right no i don't i don't have one either so why why didn't you upgrade to a one x I can tell you why I, did. I didn't, because I didn't really feel like there was any reason to, because everything that runs on a One X runs on a VCR. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I didn't. I, I looked at the benefits at the time. I didn't have a 4K TV, and I was like, you know what? There's there's just not that much of an incentive for me to spend, you know, five hundred dollars on a One X, especially because, yeah, you know, One X came out in, I believe it was what twenty. Was it 2017 or 2016? 17, I think. I think. Yeah, I could be wrong. I think it was like that. Yeah. So I figured by then, maybe two years, two and a half years until the start of the next generation, I'm not going to drop $500 on it now. Now, had, or even with the PS4 Pro, I never upgraded to a PS4 Pro either. And that was basically, I looked at it and again said, it's just not that much benefit for me. Now, had they come out and maybe said, we're going to have exclusive games would i have looked at it i'm still not 100 percent sure because to me sony's output this generation really hasn't matched what they did in the playstation 3 generation and microsoft's output you could tell they basically gave up on this generation yes about two years after they launched the xbox one you could tell they were just saying we're going to next gen 
that's where we're going to focus moving forward. So it's, I couldn't justify those resources. So I'm ready for the next gen to start. I'm ready to invest in like a series X now, but Microsoft certainly has put it in my mind that if they said with X cloud, you can get some of these performance enhancements just by play, like playing on my Xbox one VCR, I could get, you know, better resolution or performance of select games. I probably would at least test that out for the first six months, especially if stock of a series X was hard to come by. Right. Yeah. So I, 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 I agree with you. I think, um, I mean, I, I would, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a series X, you know, day one because I, um, yeah. You know, as a content creator, I definitely want to check it out, and I will be checking it out. But I also worry about the longevity that and, and the usage I'll get out of that system. Um, like you said, it may take some time before we really start to see exclusive games appear on that system. You know, the Hellblades and the Project Mars. You know, it could be could be two years away. Quite honestly, the next year's game may be maybe that long long to go as well. And um, there's rumors of a Fable game that's that's going to get announced yep. as well. So, you know, is that going to be exclusive or is that going to be, you know, X number of years from now? I would I would think that it's probably something that will get will get announced with the console, but it won't be um, released with the console. It'll be something that right. comes out in a couple of years. Right. And see, that's where, like, you kind of brought up the point earlier is maybe Microsoft is a little behind where it is like we need that extra 18 months to really get the games we want on this hardware going and what better way to basically f give us a little a little extra space to stretch our legs then we're going to release basically just like of a better word for up res xbox one x games yeah. on the series x for those first 12 to 18 months it's enough that you will look at them and say, wow, this looks great. But it's also, it's something that maybe for the developers, when they're working on those development profiles, kind of like with, like with the Switch, developers have two profiles. They have docked and undocked. Yep. So I would imagine for the Xbox, it's probably, like right now, they obviously have three profiles they're working on with the VCR, the S, and the X. So now you're going to introduce potentially two more. We still don't know the details of Lockhart because Microsoft has yet to officially announce it. So if they really do view it as basically the PC of low settings versus, versus ultra settings, it could, I mean, it could still be a Q&A nightmare, but maybe because the architecture, everything is very similar. It's very similar to PC development. That That's where just Microsoft is really banking on that it's not going to cause too much of a headache to developers because some developers when the rumors of Lockhart were coming out, some expressed some disinterest in supporting a two skew approach, especially at a launch. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And so uh, and yeah. to add to that, um, there's uh, some media outlets as well that, that do uh, tech based reviews of of the games and they have expressed concern about that as well. So that, that, that goes back to the point that I made earlier about, you know, the QA process. Uh, it seems like Microsoft is, and they're not doing this intentionally, I don't want to, you know, get, get this twisted, but they're pushing a lot more work onto different groups of, of people, but they don't really realize that that's, that's what they're doing. Do you know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, you know, game reviewers have to review the game across potentially five different systems. Um, you know, uh, if you do um, screen captures and, and frame rate analysis and things like that, then you have to consider yeah. all, the, all, the, all the environments. So it really, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting, you know, future that potentially that we're going to step into. And I, I'm really fascinated to see where this goes. I, I, I do commend Microsoft for having, you know, the balls to go out and try this approach. <laughs> and I think, look, I think, you know, they're, they're a very smart company. They, they do a lot of market research and, you know, they feel this is the best, best approach for them and good luck to them. I think um, it will, I mean, I think the Xbox Series X will be a fine piece of hardware. It really just depends on, you know, how, how well people embrace it as far as, you know, is this something that I 
really, really need, especially now when, when we know that there's nothing exclusive that, that's coming out for the system on, on day one or at least, you know, for the, the first 18 months or, or so. So that's where, like right now with Microsoft's marketing, because it has primarily been all about Series X, outside of just that one interview about the exclusives, is you have to, you have to wonder how they're actually going to market that decision, or is it just going to kind of be a silent thing? Yeah, or, I mean, I, I, yeah, if it's silent, yeah, do, would that circumvent some of the potential issues that you have expressed concern with? I don't necessarily think it's going to be silent, but I think, you know, when they make their uh, their, their uh, big announcement, when they announce the, the hardware officially, I think what they'll probably say is, and these are the games that we're working on over the next couple of years that are coming, and they'll you know they'll show some type of you know teaser roll of of some really cool things that they're doing, and uh -huh. I think that'll get people excited. I mean, if you if you if you kind of dangle the carrot in front of them and, and offer them you know, the next Gears, the next Fable game, the next Forza game, maybe some new IP from the new studios that they've acquired as well. You know, that may be enough. Like you said, that may be enough for them to say, you know what, we're, we're good with, with no exclusive right now. Um, these games are coming and, and we're, we're good with that. You know, the future is bright for the, for the hardware and, you know, the best is yet to come. And, you know, that that's maybe all that they really need to do. Right. That's, See, that's what the interview that they gave, it was very, just the wording that Matt Booty gave, it just seems so kind of, it, it was, it felt wishy-washy. Yeah. In kind of the sense of, like, we, you and I each expected Microsoft pretty much to pull the plug on the Xbox One within basically the first year, if not quicker. I would say 12 months, yeah. Yeah. And then that interview basically, you know, said, we're going to be wrong. And I still feel that I think if the Series X does launch strong, Microsoft is going to sever the Xbox One basically as quick as they can because we saw, I mean, they did this with the original Xbox. Yes. They launched the 360 and they made sure you forgot the Xbox ever existed. The 360 had a very long, successful life. But once the Xbox One came out, Microsoft shelved the 360 very quickly and this is that this is the first time they've really they're kind of embracing legacy in terms of hardware and also software right and i think i understand the whole legacy of software point because it plays into the game pass and the backwards compatibility aspect of their business model and i mean kudos to them they're probably the most progressive on those issues out of all three console manufacturers because Nintendo's, well, Nintendo's Nintendo. They, they view backwards compatibility kind of as a luxury and they, they just brand, they just feel their brand is too valuable to give away games at a bargain price. And Microsoft, uh, Sony, Sony's Jim Ryan doesn't understand why anyone would play a PlayStation 1 game these days. <laughs> right? Very so, true. <laughs> and Microsoft's sitting there saying, yeah, we're throwing some original Xbox games on our services. And it's it's a really it's a really unique proposition from them. I mean, my stance is I think it's going to benefit them in the long run, especially if they are able to continue to sell Game Pass on the Xbox One today. Because I still think ultimately we're going to see so software sales are going to slow down once the Series X is introduced. Yep. For, for general releases on the Xbox One, especially from Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft Microsoft probably only publishes half a dozen games a year on the Xbox One. And that's kind of where I viewed them saying, oh, we're not going to have these exclusives. It's kind of like, well, what do you guys actually put out a given year anyways? Because if we're only going to talk about maybe, you know, outside of the launch where you would expect Microsoft probably to launch four or five games, if you're only going to have another handful of games in those first 18 months, then it's it's really inconsequential. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we go back to the Xbox One, they had Crimson Dragon, Forza 5, Killer Instinct, and Rise. I mean, it wasn't a, a, a very impressive launch lineup, but they had some good stuff there. And 
by the same token, I mean, the PS4, as far as exclusives go, they had, they had Drive Club, they had Knack, Killzone, and I think Resogun was the fourth. So, yes, you know... And it, yeah, it, I think that eventually came to... I know it came to Vita. I don't know if they ever downloaded it to PS3, though. They may have. Um, actually, yeah, I think, actually, I think they, they did, now that you mention it. But both I of those remember, systems... I know they did Vita. Both of those systems had pretty decent launches. I mean, I wouldn't say that they were amazing. There wasn't like a killer app on either of those, you know, that you had to right. pick up on day one. We didn't get that revolutionary Mario 64, Breath of the Wild yep. type release. Because, I mean, yeah, we just had it with Breath of the Wild only three years ago. But we don't have those start of the generation defining moments anymore. Because like, the 360 really didn't have anything the ps3 maybe i would give it to something like motorstorm because at the time that game's visuals were yeah i mean were jaw dropping the wii had wii sports but that was that was redefining because of the new controller input method of the system and right now with the series x and the playstation 5 as far as we know it is another continuation of basically what started with the playstation 3 and xbox 360 of more cinematic games, flashier graphics, no real change in terms of how we interact with the software that we're seeing on the screen. Like, yeah, we're gonna have the haptech motors and rumble, but ultimately it's still, here's your standard controller. Our new buzzword for this generation is ray tracing. Yeah. So as far as revolutionary software at launch goes, probably won't see we really can't see anything like that. It's going to come down to delivery and the narrative experiences that games offer us. Right. And I, I mean, Sony's going to have some exclusive PS5 stuff at launch. We don't know what it is yet, but you know, we, we've heard that Bluepoint will, will bring something, possibly right. something from Gorilla will have something as well. Godfall is 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 something that that has been talked about as well as a launch game. So we we think at least three titles will be launched with the PS5 exclusive titles, and I think um I think that's that's really the difference for me in that you know Sony hasn't really changed their their approach going into a new generation. So and, if we look at like. Let's look at a hypothetical launch lineup. We'll say Microsoft launches with Halo Infinite, um, a new Forza game, and we'll just throw Fable out there just to give it a round, just to give it a three, mm -hmm. three games. So you have those three, which also come to the Xbox One, and you have Sony come out with what we assume will be a Demon Souls remake. Yes. Horizon 2. And... Godfall. And Godfall. So out of the, which would you say is the stronger lineup in terms of just, just in terms of the software, not so much it being exclusive or not? That's a really good point. It, it's it's not that easy to, to pick pick a winner there, is it? I mean, I, I would probably say that Microsoft would, would have a stronger showing, but that's just me personally, you know, saying that because I, uh, Horizon was a great game, but I never really got into it as much as other people did. I thought it was technically a brilliant game. Godfall yep. looks kind of, you know, Godfall looks a little shaky right now. Uh, yeah. But having said that, we've seen what? We've seen two minutes of, of, of the game, you know, at best. So I'm definitely right. willing to, to, <laughs> to give it more of a chance. Blue Point will bring something good to the table. Probably Demon Souls. You know, that, that, again, that's a game that I enjoyed, but, you know, did that really sell that many copies when it first came out? Probably you know, right. not really. I mean, I think you know, Microsoft would definitely have the upper hand there as far as you know, if, if that's what they do, if that's what they and did. That's, that's the interesting thing with Demon Souls is everyone talk about like, oh, it, it would be such a huge launch game. I played it on the PS3. I love the game, but we have seen three Dark Souls games since then. We've had Bloodborne. We recently got Sekiro. Mm -hmm. We have Elden Ring coming from the creator of Demon Souls. And I feel like Bloodborne was probably that formula perfected. Yeah. So going back to Demon Souls, 
just assuming it's a straight remaster, they not really going to refine certain aspects of it. It might it's it might be tough to go back to, just in that regard. Like if I view that hypothetical PS5 launch lineup, there's probably nothing there for me day one just based on those three games. Whereas Microsoft, even though I know I could play those on my Xbox One day one. I would probably still go out and get a Series X for those games mm -hmm. because yeah. I I I want the better performance, and I think that's what they're banking on. You know, the the lure of hey, runs best on Series X. You'll get the absolute best experience, sixty frames plus ray tracing. You know, why wouldn't you do that? You know, if you've got the money to spend, why wouldn't you take your old hardware to GameStop and trade it in and get a Series X? And I think that's definitely what they're what they're trying to go for. And like you said, you know, maybe that's the the approach they're going with. And, you know, um, if it really is just a matter of, you know, we're not quite ready yet, but we will be. So just give us a little bit more time and we'll, we'll have, you know, the, the top tier exclusive stuff coming. Then maybe that's all they really need to do. But I just, you know, man, I, I think for me, if you don't come to the table with, with, with exclusive games for a new piece of hardware, then I, I just kind of question, well, you know why you made, what what did you decide to bring out the system at that time or why why bother you know what I mean it, it, it's like I hate to say this analogy and you, you're going to kill me for this but <laughs> dude it's like buying a 3ds and playing DS games on it you know what I'm saying it's like you you just yeah. kind of you you're kind of just stuck in this in this world for for a while until you know you get to the next level and hopefully look. The other thing that we can't discount is Matt Booty said some stuff that maybe he probably shouldn't have said. And I'm not saying that because the information he said was inaccurate, but maybe it's it's more like, hey, you know, we're going to just follow the same approach we've always had, like you mentioned before, in that after 12 months, we're going to just phase out this stuff, you know? Um, we're going to... We, we, the message now is, yes, we're going to support it, but things may go exactly the same way that they did last generation. And it really just kind of is, is a matter of time and, and, and seeing what, what comes out of that. I do think Matt Booty's kind of statement was very strange, both in the timing and the message, because I don't think I've ever heard that being said so, so early on before new systems right. are being you know, released to the public. Yeah, if, if it would have came out say i'll say e3 2020 if it just came out in a post interview after they showed a bunch of stuff and they said yeah you know some of the games that we're still publishing and he might have you know he'd just say like halo infinite will still come to the xbox one i don't think anyone really would have batted an eye it would have been like okay that's that's kind of expected it's been in development for a long time he probably didn't have enough time to commit all the resources to the series x because the game probably just started development four years ago so you didn't actually have dev kits even ready for it at that time so people probably would have been a little more forgiving, but the timing of this interview was a year before the platform's even coming out, and you're already seemingly basically kicking it down a bit, saying, yeah, we're not committed to you right away. Yeah. And that's, and it's kind of like, as you said, like Microsoft doesn't seem to come out guns blazing. They're not coming out to win. It's kind of like they're playing they're at a poker table and they're kind of, they're playing it very cautiously. They're just they checking. Have, they're just yeah, checking. They're, they're just checking and they're not raising. Yep. They're not, they're not doing anything. They're just kind of going with the flow and they could be sitting on a full house. But for some reason, instead of just showing those cards and starting off strong right off the bat, they're just, they're playing the table and they're just kind of biding their time. Like maybe this is part of Microsoft's marketing grand scheme. They're maybe they're anticipating Sony is also not going to really have that big time exclusive in those first 18 months. Because I mean, if we look at Sony's current lineup, I mean, we have the last of us two coming out in a few months. We have ghost of Tsushima coming out in the summer yep. of 2020. And those are two massive, releases from Sony's first party studios. So obviously Naughty Dog is not going to have a PlayStation 5 title probably before 2022. Right. And Sucker Punch, I mean, this is only their second game on the PlayStation 4 and Infamous came out 
I believe, the spring after the PS4 launched. So this took them almost an entire generation to develop their second game. So by the time they're ready with another game, could be 2023, maybe maybe even later. So out of Sony's main studios, like we have the Japanese studios, we have Gorilla, which very likely is Horizon 2. And then we're going to have Insomniac, which more than likely is making a Spider-Man 2, which would probably come out maybe 2021. If those are still kind of Sony's go-to, like what's their next big first party release from their stable of IPs? God of War? And maybe that's even uh, maybe a 2022 release? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think there's no doubt God of War will, will get announced um, and probably be a 2022 title. Uh, I think the timing is it sounds about right for that. So maybe like maybe that's where if I'm Microsoft, I'm saying a lot of these games have been in development for a few years. I don't want to give up that 40 million base yet. Even Sony, if I'm sure Sony had to have some discussions at some time of saying to Naughty Dog, we're just going to switch over to The Last of Us as a PlayStation 5 launch game, or even to Sucker Punch saying we're going to shift Ghost of Tsushima as a PlayStation 5 launch title. But you just you can't give up that hundred million user base, and I wonder if even maybe Sony, even with like the rumored Demon Souls, if at any time they're saying to themselves, "What if we brought this to the PS4?" Let's even say three months after after it launches on the PlayStation Five. Mm, yeah, I mean, again, can't rule it out. If if it's if it makes sense, then I think they'll do it and. You know, PS4 is more than capable of playing a, a remastered or a remade Demon Souls game that, that is targeted for the PS5, but will still run on a PS4, you know, albeit with some, you know, minor graphical downgrades, I would, I would think. Right. So it's definitely... So basically, like right now, we're just... We both of you, Microsoft's approach to the Series X and their exclusivity concept as the gamble. Yeah. I think from a business standpoint, it's it's brilliant as long as they are able to market it correctly. You have a little more hesitation where this could actually in turn negatively impact the Series X's public perception if it's just viewed as basically just the high-end Xbox One with little incentive to come out to. And that's really where Microsoft's messaging has to come in of, oh, this is brand new. We're going to have exclusives. Don't focus on those first 18 months. But, you know, that's, it, all this remains to be seen. We really have to see how the marketing comes about. We have to see that E3 presentation or the actual system unveiling to see how Microsoft is going to message software for these, for five platforms moving forward. Yeah. Or if they just kind of do the PC approach of, hey, this game is coming to the Series X. We are going to release it for the Xbox One. You might see them on store shelves. If you do, cool, buy it. We win if you do. If you don't and you buy for your Series X, we still win. We're, we really don't care where you play the game. We just want you to play the game. And ideally, you are investing into you know our hardware our software in some way yeah i mean one thing i do know is this year is going to be probably one of the most interesting years in video games for a while with with how this plays out it's um obviously you know the dawn of a new generation that's coming two massive systems will be unveiled and you know if the hype is real then these things could be you know, really, really powerful systems. And I think whichever way you decide, I think um, it's going to be a, a very interesting road to the next generation. I think there's going to be a lot a lot of interesting and cool stuff that comes out of it for sure. I'm looking forward to it. I think, um, you know, again, my takeaway is Microsoft, I don't think they're being aggressive enough with, with you know, the, the next gen, but that remains to be seen. You know, that this could, this could come off in two ways you know they could be absolute marketing geniuses and like you said completely change the landscape of how we think about consoles and, and console generations the way that they're unveiled and launched or it could just go down in flames and they are left 
once again in a situation where they've basically given up, you know, the generation halfway through and then thinking about, you know, what comes next. So how will, this is how we'll conclude this episode with some, we'll do a quick prediction. <laughs> let's, let's assume, well, let's not assume. Based on what we know of Microsoft's approach with Game Pass X Cloud, all these services of how they want to basically inflate how they're going to sell the Xbox brand versus Sony's traditional, here's our box, which platform manufacturer of the two do you see having the most success coming into this new gen? Microsoft with their subscription model plus the Xbox hardware or Sony with really still just the PlayStation 5 hardware? I think Sony uh, will still have the edge over Microsoft, even though, you know, it's, it's, it, you'd be a fool to discount the xCloud and um, Game Pass and, and all those value adds that they're bringing in to the ecosystem. I still think that at the end of the day, people just want to play games, man. And, you know, Sony for many, many, many years have constantly just given the people what they've wanted for the most part. I mean, they've had, they've had their, their share of, of, of rough years. I mean, let's be honest, <laughs> but look, I, I don't think Sony's really diverting much from what has made them successful since the first day. And I don't really think they, they need to. And, and for me, I think at the end of the day, Sony's, you know, is the one to go for. What do you think? Okay. I, right now, my, my money is, is on Microsoft for some, I just see, I see the series X being a successful seller for them. I think if we do see Lockhart launch on the same day as the series X at a low entry price, I think that could be a, a hot holiday item. I think Microsoft is just going to continue to add value to Game Pass. They're going to launch xCloud with a diverse library of software, and basically it's going to destroy Stadia within its opening minute. Oh, yeah. Stadia has <laughs> just been a disaster. And I, I think just with that Game Pass xCloud, especially with Microsoft's plans of expanding xCloud to other devices... I think at the end, Microsoft is just going to build that bigger install base of active users where they're just, that ecosystem is just going to grow. And even if, I do think the PS5 will outsell the Series X in raw units. I think Microsoft is just going to have a larger engaged user base across their subscription services and active Series X Lockhart consumers. So I think I think Microsoft is going to come out the winner between these two companies moving into the next gen due to their progressive nature of where they want to take the industry moving forward. But it's it's definitely something, you know, it's gonna take years to see how this plays out where we haven't even really reached the infancy of it yet. Yep. We're barely at the conception state. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think that's valid, and I think um, you know it's going to be it's going to be fun, man. Next gen's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Let's let's get there. You know, hopefully we'll get some announcements here over the next couple of months. Uh, rumored for Sony next month and Microsoft in March. So let's let's go. You know, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, well, it's exciting times await everyone in this industry, and we should have a lot of exciting hype announcements. Hopefully, in the coming weeks, if not in the coming weeks, definitely at E3. So there's a lot to look forward to. So this, I'd say this has been a fun and informative discussion. I definitely enjoy talking this topic with you. Likewise, man, it was, it was a blast. You should have me on again. We'll, uh, we'll talk about something else that happens next week or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think every week so far, we seem to have some sort of like a switch pro rumor. Maybe when something <laughs> substantial happens, we can well, talk about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we're going to do the switch pro, let, let's, let's talk about it when there's something real on the table. Yeah, not just um, this job listing had the word pro in it, but it was talking about like pro gaming. <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah, well, I'll definitely have you back again. Hopefully everyone listening enjoyed this episode. And so thank you for coming on tonight and talking about the Series X and Microsoft's future, even some of Sony's future. We got into that topic a bit. Yeah, man. Uh, it's been a blast. Thanks again for having me on the show. It's been awesome. All right, everyone. So if you enjoyed the episode, give the video a like. If you hated it for whatever reason, give it a dislike. Take, leave a comment in the comment section below about what your take for Microsoft future or even Sony's future is. And once again, thank you MVG for uh, appearing on here. Everyone, you can find a link to his channel in the description below. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate and live life to the fullest every day. <laughs>